What's up? What's going on? How you guys doing out there? Ah, ah, just doing a little throat clearing. Ah, 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 ah. What's up? It is I, Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer. How you guys doing? I got the little Christmas theme set up. You know, it's kind of dark and all that stuff in here. Isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah. I said yeah, yeah. And welcome to the dark side of the room the well the one show that we do that's just a casual conversation with you guys and me and of course the chat and all of those guys and well it is christmas eve so thank you guys thank you guys for showing up hopefully for those of y'all that gotta work today um being here with us is just a little bit of the weight off of those shoulders and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today but first let's just get all that regular jazz out of the way so if you guys want to join us in the chat or any of those other places today that's really easy all you got to do is pick up a keyboard that's right just any old keyboard or preferably the one that you're using pull out your email and of course type in back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail that's right at sign i don't know I, I it's actually called the at sign i was hoping it had a cool name like an ampersand or something like that but yeah the at sign and all of that and of course um gmail because everybody's got one this ain't like them olden days where you had to wait to get an invitation from somebody and them 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 was the days and of course follow us on social media that's twitter at back in the deck instagram at back in the deck um that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call facebook um on the group deckers on the book and of course join us on soundcloud as well now if you guys you know i'll again like like subscribe follow um sign up ring the bells do all that stuff the bells the bells and of course if in y'all got uh some what's the term i'm looking for desire to help us out a little bit that's easy for you to do just head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and become a decker now being a decker you know that's the one dollar tier and beyond that yeah you guys you know you can grab your own card um like one of our queens that's shannon boom boom lay what is going on shannon and uh yeah she's on the queen level tier um you know kings queens guillotines taking lives tonight that is what we are doing over there and of course you know let me just put that email back up there and again um head on over to our youtube channel do that whole liking and subscribing and all of that follow those things hey look at what we got over here with all of these videos going back all this time i mean just look at all them videos wait let me just pull up yeah look at all them videos that we got going back going back going back going back look at all that we just we do so much we do so many videos so much stuff and you guys can check out the evolution of our channel and you know what i get a lot and i mean that i get a lot of people saying well i just can't stand looking at your show it's just nothing but a talking head and all that jazz and you know what i tell them I understand thank you for supporting us because we are friends and all that jazz but if you can't stand looking at this mug I understand just head on over to the soundcloud.com slash bid underscore P and you can actually listen to our shows you can download our shows and keep them forever and listen to us whenever you want and all that jazz so that's what you guys can do over there and of course thank you thank you for showing up so we got a lot of stuff to talk about because guess what it's the holiday time and what does that mean what does it mean that it's the holiday time well today's christmas eve yep that's right we are coming at you live on christmas eve afternoon um yeah uh, christmas eve afternoon um 2019 where did the decade go I mean, I looked up one day and it was already 2010, which was cool because I was ready to I was ready to celebrate Armageddon Day and May in 2012, 
and now it's almost 2020 like we've passed back to the future day this has been a decade this has been a year and oh my god this is like a really thing right right oh my god we've got a return visitor what is going on geeks meow it has been way way too long since you have been on one of these shows but then again it's been way too long since i have been transmitting on on um this place but yeah yeah i bet the work's been insane this is a hard time for you in your field i know that and that will stay safely anonymous because that's how we roll anyway um so it's christmas eve and man there is so much stuff going on oh you can't hear me cute uh cue the critic no problem cue i got you i got you or maybe you might want to turn up uh yeah you might want to turn up your thing because my mic is loud loud mic um but yeah so we have been talking about so many things over the course of the year we've talked about being a nerd of color we've talked about being lgbtq we have talked about um games outside of people's general comfort zones we have talked about dragging your feet when it comes to learning something new we have talked about a whole bunch of stuff just talking 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 and um i've been checking the emails and no one's sending questions so that's okay but i wanted to talk about something um as we get really close to the oh god to the day of unfettered capitalism no not black friday that's already come and gone this is the time of year to make all of your children just what's the term i'm looking for shut up with all of their whining <laughs> that's what that, that's what we're really hoping to do you know this is the time of year that you probably have a dead tree or a candelabra with eight or more candles on and you know fire hazards and of course a whole bunch of money that has been spent um on toys and and grown-ups get grown-up gifts given to little kids and by that i mean socks don't give your kids socks wait on the socks give them the socks when they're in college i promise they will appreciate them it's like college on um from college on that's when we're like oh my god thank you mom i needed socks oh i needed socks i can't believe they're like nine bucks a pair and those and 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 then like what what is going on with target you know i i don't want to spend 18 dollars on a damn t-shirt that i'm gonna wear under my clothes thanks this this is great so you know that's the kind of stuff you give to your adults all right so give the kids the toys all the toys it doesn't matter if they're name brand toys or not name brand toys matter of fact uh one of the things <laughs> one of the things i definitely noticed was um as you guys know i come from the lower economic um areas you know I, I grew up in south central los angeles and we had two major things growing up in my neighborhood target wasn't one of them um we had a kmart but not like a target we didn't have a whole lot of those things but we had a whole lot of korean swap meets and the kids that were in the neighborhood we would go to the korean swap meets and think oh man i want this toy i want that toy i want that toy if you grew up in downtown la you got santee alley and the toy district and um, there were the things that we saw on the commercials, but I think Toy Story 4 um, really illustrated best. Yo, what's up, JJ Newberries? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but Toy Story 4 really seriously showed it right with the Keanu Reeves, um, the Keanu Reeves Motorcycle Man um, toy, you know, because that that really was what it was like it was like oh man you know i saw the gi joe commercials and i saw those elaborate backyard toy sets and all that stuff and i will tell you i tried building them and yeah let's just say my crafting skills back then okay my crafting skills over the past two years has outshined the rest of my entire life because back then i had origami so i was a, I was an easy kid to buy for i just like i would have my mom um purchase a ream of paper from her hospital job and bring it back and that and easy origami which was a book that i saw on reading rainbow and i was good until i got to school okay because you know my na the neighbors around they had like the optimus prime transformer and and they had robotech stuff and and all that stuff and i'm like i can make a crane that moves <laughs> yeah so that that was just me but no i'm not in the pain olympics 
what I want to talk about is Christmas, or more to the point, being a geek after October. Now this is this is a real big thing, you know, because the level of geek I'm talking about is not restricted by age. All right. Now within these circles of gamers, um, gamers and performers, and just lots of different people, you guys will find that there is a huge, and I'm talking like um, fervent love of Halloween. Fervent love. It's like, yes, I get to wear all my toys in public and I get the, 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 and it's cool. I used to not like Halloween because I was hanging out with 20 something year old college um, people and most of them use Halloween, at least the ones in my area. They used Halloween for jocks to dress like girls and girls to dress like street walkers and that was it. And not that I'm against it. I just figure, you know what? Be honest about it. All right. That's, that's the number one thing that I was with. Um, but um, one of the things that I definitely noticed was the older I got, the more and, and the more mature crowds that I was handling in, um, I was hanging out with people that were a little bit more mature. But speaking of people that are a little bit more mature, let's check out the chat. What's going on, you guys? Hey, yeah, what's going on? Let's see, we got the Geeks Meow in here. Cue the critic. Uh-oh, I got a troll. I got a troll in here. And of course, Attila Khan. What is going up? What, what? Visiting all the way from not just Metropolis, the Metropolis. You know, it, you can find it on the internet under T for the Metropolis. And um, so as I was saying, there was a lot of stuff that we did and that we talked about that um, um, as, ooh, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Ah, there we are. Yeah, um, as an older guy, um, yeah, as an older guy, the way that I kind of get down with Halloween now is um, this is my time of the year to really show, um, well, what I made and not just the stuff I made, but how I can get down with making other kids smile. You know, that was my big thing. I'm like, all right, cool. All right, who, who's gonna be a knight? Cool, here, have a sword. I've got one laying around. Hey, who's gonna, who wants to be an alien? All right, cool, I got an alien mask. Anybody wanna be a clown? All right, cool, just come on up. Uh, bring your parents and I do the makeup and I don't do it to hit on their moms, all right? And yeah, um, it's funny, I'm getting some interesting notes today. Like I should have a lapel mic for this. I used to do the lapel mic thing and I will let you know that back then it was just, I sounded more like an ASMR um, person than I do um, as someone who's talking. Now, I'm making myself right now just a nice cup of Christmas coffee because um, we got a new coffee pot. You know, this Christmas or this holiday season, this year, we have been, yeah, we have been replacing a lot of our heavy tech. And this is one of the things that I, that actually made me think of today's topic because being a geek post Halloween, um, we really want to keep the Halloween thing going. We get dressed up in our goth gear. Those of us in California or specifically the LA area, we end up going to, um, you know, we tend to end up going to Disneyland. We do a lot of stuff. We, we, we do a lot of stuff. Um, but being a geek this time of year people go oh my god what to get us for christmas now i make it clear <laughs> i make it clear oh what what harumph only drink the finest of tea leaves please um yeah you also drink scotch <laughs> that's right that's right take that tea actually put that put scotch in your tea anyway um and it's like, you know, what what is it that we want to get geeks for Christmas and or Yule or Hanukkah, you know, because, well, honestly, Hanukkah, I dig. I kind of like to play like an adult version of Dreidel um, because I like gambling, but um, that, that's me. But I try and make it easy on my friends, you know, on my people. Um, on my people, I let them know. Um, I'll take 20 bucks on a pack of smokes, and that's all the thinking about me you got to do. That, that's really cool. 
and some of my people are like, oh my God, no, I, I want to get some more thoughtful and blah. And I'm like, look, if I got 20 bucks from every single one of my friends, I'd be able to take care of some stuff that I need. Um, and, um, you know, that, that's one of the things now. Oh man. Oh man. Here we go. We got one of them statements. We're going to the chat. We got the geeks meow saying I got all my gaming group guys dice this year because I was being uncreative as hell. Bull. I call it bull crap. Bull crap. Bull crap. Bull crap. You know, if you're hanging out with gamers and you don't know what to get them, dice ain't uncreative. Do you know how many colors, flavors, materials, languages dice come in? You want to? Oh, and wait. Oh, uh, let me tank. Oh my God. Um, dice for a gamer? Really? It ain't like we have enough. There's never enough. Never enough dice. I don't care if you have 50, 60 pounds of dice. You can always use another set. How do I know you can always use another set? Go to a convention, comic book convention, game convention, playboy convention, and there's Always chess X at a booth saying, take this coffee mug, give us $8 and just dip the coffee mug and the dice and then go home unless you're going to give us another $8. They know, they know that all dice are latent with nicotine, heroin, and a little bit of LSD. Just a little, just a little LSD to keep you hoping for that nat 20 or whatever the highest die roll on that one is going to be. Now, um, God, I think it was 15 years ago now, 15 years ago, I worked at a game store and um, it was called the Dice House. And this was my favorite time of the year to be a salesman because I love, love talking to grandmas because let's face it, everybody's got that previous generational family member that's cool but not cool enough like you know you got your grammy or your your pop pop or your weird uncle and um you know you've got you've got that person that wants to be cool but just they're too busy working a day job or they're too old to keep up with the lightning fast trends that are going on so, you know, you ask them for Battlefield 4, you know. Yeah, I'm behind the times, but still. You ask them for Battlefield 4, and they'll get you Battle for the Field from the $2 Bennett Target. You know that relative. <laughs> you know, I love, love talking to those relatives because I loved being a salesman for them because I could help get them up to speed in a non-predatory manner. You know what I mean? And, um, ah, one of the things I super duper loved when i was working in retail because there were let's see everything is super duper love when you work in retail because or not everything is super duper love but what i have said is um all that isn't gut wrenching um up at night claw your eyes out hatred is super love in retail so you know the days of not pain are like heaven but um Helping out the previous generations with the cool stuff in the field, I really like. Now, we are at an interesting time as tabletop gamers, okay? As tabletop gamers, we got a lot of stuff um, to consider because this stuff ain't cheap. Like, it was never cheap, but man, because what do we got? We have the classics, all right? We've got the classic games that everybody thinks about when it comes to tabletop board gaming. All right. And, you know, so, yeah, you guys are probably saying them out loud right now. You know, I mean, of course, this, you know, the king of all popular board games from the company that's been passed around a lot, like a specific type of smoking implement at various music with guys with the last name of Marley attending um, Monopoly, you know. I mean, that, that's the thing we're looking at. And of course, you can get Monopoly at Target for like $25. You know, the problem, though, is what household doesn't already have Monopoly? You know, I bet you dollars to donuts that if you come from the poorest parts of the United States, 
Somebody on the block already has it. Matter of fact, I'm willing to bet five houses on your residential block has a copy of Monopoly. You know, so what else, you know, what else are we going to get? Well, there are loads of games out there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Going real old school games other than chess and go and of course Moncala. But um but when it comes to the stuff that's out there, there are loads, 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 loads of stuff. Like, you know what? We're going to do a little thing right here. Check it out. Okay. So, we are on Google right now. We are on Google. Let's just do a Google search for table top board games here we go I'm pushing I'm pushing the button I'm pushing enter oh my god oh boom. let's see what we got we've got the LL Bean deluxe thing horrified let's go to the shopping section yeah there we go Star Wars uh, Carasone we've got clue luxury edition horrified um, Jurassic 25 outlaws conquest strategy forbidden sky secret Hitler um, Political insert political joke here out of the woods home alone Jumanji class Pac-Man Pac-Man That started as a as a video game, you know, I mean, you know throw throw burrito Jaws Megaland Catan star oh starfares of Japan. Oh god. I guess I'm gonna be broke Azul Megaland all of the Milton Bradley um, later on born as Hasbro games you even got caroms Caroms or pocket golf, you know, you got um, Star Wars games, you know, Armada and all that stuff. But let's go back. Let's take a look at some of the prices on these things. $179 for a box of Clue. $179. You know, $48. Um, $50. $75. You know, um, you know, where was there? There was one down here. Yeah, $19 for a chess set. Of course, it's a chess set. $148 for a Karen board. Fine. $99. A hundred dollars. Not a hundred. Hunted. It's a hundred dollars for um, Star Wars Armada. And make no mistake, the miniatures in it are gorgeous. But the stuff that we got, um, you know, the stuff that we got out there is so new and so abundant and so expensive. Where do you start? Now, in the crowds that I run in, because I run with a lot of different people, I tend to really like hanging out with gamers because I like to play games. That's one of the things. But my friends who aren't gamers, and by that I mean playing board games or painting miniatures or playing D&D and stuff, is not their primary hobby. That gets hard um, because it is my primary hobby. And when it comes to trends, it's easy to jump on the trend of a niche hobby like ours and let, look, even if it is our life, even if we spend 40 to 50 hours a week doing this stuff, we are but a small portion of the world, a very small portion of the population. And let's face it, a super small portion of our workplace and our educational facility place okay not everybody at your school is a gamer not everybody at your at your work is a gamer even if you work in video games <laughs> you know now if you work in games half the people there are gamers and the other halves want their paychecks to go home because they've been working there too long and if they see another set of dice or another bug report or another faq it's about done but the big trend amongst non-gamers, or, you know, regular people, um, is Cards Against Humanity. And I, I personally don't have the taste for it. And I will tell you why right now. You see, when I'm at parties, even if it's a party full of gamers, as soon as Cards Against Humanity breaks out as the game that people play, um... It stops being a party and it stops being a game by any definition that I'm comfortable with. Um, essentially, Cards Against Humanity ends up being all that's done, which is kind of like, it's a game of psychology. How can I make this person laugh right here? Or how can I be the cleverest? And I hang out with very intelligent people who, yeah, I'm saying it on air, are mostly insecure just like me. 
So it becomes this weird competition of a popularity contest between people that were never popular, you know? And yeah, it, it, it can get a little weird. Not, not malicious, just weird. And the second part is once Cards Against Humanity comes out, the liquor increases and then it becomes a drunken Cards Against Humanity night which is fine for some people not really my bag and definitely not my bag at every single party i go to so it's a thing so i, I kind of need a break on that but if you guys are looking for stuff to get your gamer friends and you got a little cash i want to talk about a couple of things because we all know that the biggest trend thanks to some old friends of mine some new friends of all of ours and people that we're fans of the biggest trend right now outside of video games is Dungeons and Dragons. The daddy of role playing games, the 1974 classic, which is fifth edition. Woo! Fifth edition um, DD. But I'm here to say that that may be an easy gift, and I mean super easy, barely an inconvenience. I saw the deluxe starter pack at Target three days ago. I'm like, man, we have arrived, sorta. And this morning I was watching a video as I was having my first cup of coffee, trying to convince myself that getting out of bed was a good idea. Second half of the show. Um, and I came across a video about a dude's top 10 RPGs that aren't Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm just like, oh, I have to see what this guy likes because um when I'm pitching our when I'm pitching the Decker community service group and stuff like that and our community outreach stuff I try and tell people all the time Dungeons and Dragons is not not is not nope not nine yet uh-uh not the only role-playing game out there um I'm gonna take us down to our bluff talk stuff. Um, yeah, from way back in the days when this channel was super young and we had the Viking, um, we had a show that we did back then called Fluff Talk. Fluff Talk! And let's take a look here. And when we did Fluff Talk, way back in the day, it's got how long ago was that? Um, that was five years ago that I put the stuff on SoundCloud, so it was even further back. Um, yeah, our first episode was about a DD and d expansion, but we had Mouse Guard and Paranoia and another D&D expansion, Eclipse Phase, Legends of Five Rings, Cyberpunk 2020, Aberrant from White Wolf, Ars Magica, um... Oh God, Numenera, In Nomine, Vampire the Masquerade, um, Victoriana, Werewolf the Apocalypse. Um, yeah, we are talking um, lots of different games. And a lot of the games that I like to play nowadays um, tend to be a little newer, um, tend to be stuff that I haven't seen before because my primary game group um, tends to not want to play a game that they don't know. You know, and um, so it's one of those, I want to run the game, but a lot of the players that I play with are like, well, I don't want to run, I don't want to play in the game unless I read the whole book and unless I read the whole module. And I'm like, okay, hey, that that's your flavor. Um, but there is this thing, especially since D&D &D is the big popular thing. Now, I think fifth edition came out, what, five, six years ago? Somebody in the chat will tell me. Um, and that is the thing that's very popular but with that came this weird schism between three um dungeons and dragons excuse me um between dungeons and dragons 3.5 edition um D, D 3.0 edition came out in the year 2000 and i think it was like around 2010 2011 that well yeah fourth edition happened around 2000 yeah yeah thank you <clears throat> um fourth edition happened around 2010 2012 and that pushed people to a game called pathfinder which was essentially 
a streamlined version of 3.5, which was still um, Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 was a very, very, very granular system, which means if you're one of those gamers that like to look for loopholes and go, well, I have this certain skill, which allows me to do this. And then the GM will be like, OK, well, um, but according to this, there is this whole thing. Well, but I have another skill that will let me do this. Well, that, there was that. There was this. There was that. Um, if you like those intellectual puzzles, um, you know, yeah, if you like um, those intellectual puzzles between GMs and players, um, 3.5 is your bag because it was very, 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 very specific about what your character could do and what it couldn't do. It was only your job to keep track of every skill that you had, every bonus, like you had real control and agency over your character. Um, then fourth edition came out and it was, let's make a tabletop RPG feel like World of Warcraft and Skyrim because we're getting our butts kicked by World of Warcraft and Skyrim. And we need those, we need that new blood y'all. We need those new people. Um, it had its upsides. It had its downsides. Um, you know, it, I wasn't playing any D20 stuff at the time. And that was kind of like where I, where I went on. Um, and then fifth edition came out and about, I got into it about three years ago. And, um, I've just went forward because it's everything that I wanted out of D&D, i.e. a little more creativity, um, a very shallow learning curve so i can just get to playing just just get to playing um but as a lot of people in, who have been in games with me as a gm they'll know i run the fate system i run white wolf i run in nomine i run um hell if i hadn't heard about a game I would pick it up just to run it because I was working at a game store and I got 30% off, <laughs> you know? Um, so I mean like, you know, one of the games that I really liked running was called Victoriana. Um, and I come to gaming with a really simple philosophy. Um, setting is the primary thing that I look for. Um, the setting, the genre, okay? Cause they are two different things. All right. Um, Victoriana is a great example of that. It was the fantasy genre, but it was but its setting was the industrial age of London. So I was like, yeah, let's let's do standard tropes like that. Um, I'm not really one of those GMs that cares too much about game mechanic. Um, I've played over 30 different systems over the course of my gaming life. Um, working at comic stores and game stores was a big part of that because I had access to different systems. Um, so honestly, um, I talked with this with a friend of mine. I call him Big Ron because he's a big dude, like a big dude, like big dude. Um, and um, yeah, we were talking about um, it comes down to the GM, what they'll allow and what they won't allow. And I like to... Um, I, I like to add on, add to that fact that's also about the players and what they're playing for. You know, uh, do they want to play or do they want to win? Okay, and that, that's really a big thing. Um, there is a social contract that comes at the table. Okay, a social contract of everybody's here to have a good time. Okay, everybody is here to have a really good time. Um, one of the biggest habits that we do as gamers is we like to reskin um the game whose mechanics we know the most about with the settings that we that we like i mean that that's just one of those things um my primary gaming system throughout the 90s was white wolf and i knew white wolf like the back of my hand so i could set a white wolf game in any time period and any in any genre i could run a horror white wolf game you know a horror horror mage or horror vampire or horror werewolf it, it was all built to be that anyway i could run a comedy or um you know a circus based thing that was you know very whimsical and light um but 
you know, I could wrap those things around it because I understood the game mechanics. But if my players wanted to play a different genre, then that's what happened. That That's just what happened. Um, so yeah, when picking a game, if you want to re-gift a friend or gift a friend of yours with, see, it's gift with, you know, that's the proper grammar. Sorry, burners. Um, a game that they may or may not have. Um, I would say talk to the people that work at the store and ask them what the game's about. Um, on Game Gallery, the Duggernaut and I used to talk about this all the time. Like, all the time. Um, you know, one of the one of my favorite games of the past two years is not a 5th edition game. It's called Kids on Bikes. And one, it's $25. So it's definitely going to have a little bit of, um, <laughs> it's going to have a little bit of love for me on that one. Um, but it's essentially 1980s kids films, the role playing game. Um, you play kids on bikes. So think Stranger Things without Eleven or without Eleven on your team. Um, think the Goonies and the Monster Squad and all that jazz. You know, it's 1987 or my 1987 in a role playing book minus um, Kiefer Sutherland is a vampire. So, you know, and a good game of Stand By Me with Will Wheaton, Corey Feldman, and Jerry O'Connell, that ain't a terrible thing. It, it, it's really not a terrible thing. It's a really fun game if that's what you're up for. So, um, yeah, that is, that's one of the things. So, um, check out your local gaming store. Look on Amazon. Just look for tabletop role-playing game i know i'm saying this on christmas eve but let's face it if you're watching this channel chances are thou hast made a deal with cp time therefore tardiness and screw arounds are abound um, so yeah that is one of those things now what was the other thing that i said i'd be getting into today oh yeah why well, i didn't want to get out of bed um being a geek in uh at christmas time this is the time of year of seasonal disaffective disorder and as february tends to be a reminder of either how you're single and don't want to be or how you're in a relationship and you may not be measuring up december is a very cold time of year it's very very cold um the origins of this holiday um across most cultures um come down to one basic thing it's dark it's cold oh my god we didn't starve hooray <laughs> um, or it's dark it's cold let's do something so even if we starve we die happy hooray um now i personally i don't have seasonal affective disorder but i have a very 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 heavy blanket <laughs> so when it's cold in the morning <laughs> i don't know what happens that thing just just really gets heavier and i'm like i gotta get out of bed but i don't want to get out of bed ah, da, 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 da. you know but this is crunch time this is um this is seriously a crunch time for us because again we've got new stuff coming down um on the channel or new stuff coming down for the website in total over the next god week and a half you know because um we have been doing a lot we've been talking about the merchandise store we've been talking about um cleaning up our patreon we've been we've been talking about getting more stuff and um yeah so i have a new tier i have a new one dollar patreon or not one dollar sorry five dollar patreon prize for those of you guys that are tens you know ten uh you know if you guys are tens great tens um we've got a new thing Woo! you guys will also be able to get your own cinematic sorcerer miniature um this is a 28 millimeter scale miniature it features me in the field whoa we don't wear pointy hats <laughs> you know people tend to stare i mean the trench coats with the pockets that's bad enough but yeah, we have our own little miniatures that feature us, you know, with our signature coffee and our holy symbol getting ready 
for all that jazz. So yeah, that's one of the things um, that we came down with. You know, that's right. <laughs> uh, let's check out the chat real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna tell them about the vil the Valentine celebration. God, I am. Next month. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let them know that we're gonna be in Vegas for the week with um, the Metropolis guys and the Illuminati doing like a lot of crossover podcasts and stuff like that. And um, on, val on the whole like Valentine week type thing. Yeah, I'm gonna let them know about that in January. All right, God, come on. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was one of the things. And this stuff can get a little discouraging. All right, and this is now it's time for the deep part of our <clears throat> of our show sorry um yeah the deep part of our show you know the part that you know i get personal with you guys um this stuff has been hard this stuff has been very difficult um for those of you guys that dabble with a strong with astrology i'm a taurus all right and one thing, no, 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 shut up about being stubborn. Shut up, no, back away. Back away from your keyboard. I'm not stubborn, okay? I'm only stubborn about one thing, and that's to be open-minded and logical. That's it. Um, but one thing that Tauruses should be notorious for is the understanding that if something is worthwhile, it's not going to be easy, <laughs> okay? Um, it's not that we love hard work. It's that everything we love is hard, and that is just the thing we want to get in shape and have a good body that's going to be hard because we don't like waking up <laughs> um we want to have decent relationships that's going to be hard either because we are so unusual to the people that are attracted to us that they don't know how to handle us or being together with people that don't get on our nerves is so unusual we don't know how to handle that and that's hard um but um, I have I have gone through co-hosts. I have gone through, you know, lots of different stuff. Just lots of different stuff um, in regards to get this to getting this um, to getting this company going. Um, made lots of strides over the past seven years, you know. And it's so weird to have something to show for saying I have been doing this for almost a decade. Um, cause I've got the proof that I've been doing it for about seven years, but we don't have the followers. We don't have the patrons, you know, we're still doing this stuff. And recently I've actually been wondering, like, is it worth it? You know, is continuing to show up here every Tuesday and then expanding it to, um, Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Is it worth it? Um, if I listen to the people that have stopped working with me, no, no, it's not worth it. But a funny thing happened. A funny thing happened where I was at a gaming store and there was somebody that didn't look like they knew what they were doing um, as far as shopping for stuff. They didn't know what they wanted to do and they were really like afraid of screwing things up. And I gave them, I gave them one of our cards. And I'm like, look, just get a hold of me and um, you know, we'll, we'll play some games. As you guys know, I've recently gotten into a new game called Marvel Crisis Protocol. And they had a Facebook group. I know, I know, that wretched hive of scum and villainy. And that Facebook group has started being taken over by just terrible people. So much so that I had to exit the group. Now, I thought it was because I hurt people's feelings. And then my friends who were still part of that group... Um, have been telling me that no they're just being mean they're just being mean people like you know if somebody comes in and asks a rules question they act like whoever comes in should already know okay and here's the thing um, this whole idea of experienced people keeping people out and me not liking it is the reason I started this company it's the reason I started doing what I do and I took a look um, I took a look at what my friend was saying people were getting on him about and I'm like how are these people so cocky about a game that at this point as we are transmitting has literally been out one month and eight days one month and eight days and we already got people acting like they're king crap of turd mountain 
And I'm like, you know what? No, no. Um, because I'm here for the people that they are mean to. You know, I'm here for the people that want to learn. I'm thinking about starting my own group for that game and keeping, um, um, like really, really limiting the membership to those who have been attacked or scared away from other communities because I've seen it happen so many times. And so much of me starts to think, is this just what gaming is? Is this just what it means to be a fan of comic books? Is this what it means to be a geek in the 21st century? Um, this constant struggle for the appearance of intellectual and pop culture dominance. And then I think back to all those conventions I've been to and these conversations I've had with you guys on this show, you know, about my first time in a gaming store and being kicked out for not already being known. Um, all of the years that I've spent at gaming comic stores making sure that everyone who wanted to be in there was welcomed and those who didn't know their way around had a guide, you know, because there's there's something on the internet that bugs the crap out of me and it's this idea this idea that you and the person talking to you aren't special i i can't get around that i despise that idea it makes me angry you know this idea of um well if i know it everyone should know it because I'm not special. And my number one thing that I'm always trying to get across to people is if you know it, you learned it from somewhere, which means you had access to that knowledge and you had access to someone to help you understand it. If you have that and it's not available to just anybody, you are special. So don't be so hard on yourself you know you need to recognize that and i mean internalize that because if you internalized it my 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 truth is that if a person internalized that they have something that not everyone has access to in a deep deep manner when someone comes to them that doesn't come from a place where they have those resources you are now in the most powerful position that there really is, and that is teacher and guide. The person that can inspire someone to greatness, you know? And that, that's a huge responsibility because the power is already there. You know they don't. Guess what? There's a power dynamic. So are you going to lord over people making them feel small and insignificant just because other people did it to you when it's your turn or are you going to stand up to the others for those people so that they don't have to suffer in the way that you did If your answer is anything but the latter, just put it back in the de deck, shut your mouth and listen, all right? No one benefits from somebody being mean out of vengeance. You know, that that's just, I'm not saying don't be mean out of justice. You know, some people need to get punched in the mouth. That's just, that is a fact of life. I don't like violence, I don't condone it, but, <laughs> But I recognize that there is a time and place for it, okay? But there is so much of an eagerness to use it nowadays. And a lot of people say things like power corrupts. And that's not something I believe, you know? It's not. Now, I don't believe many things. But one of the things, or I don't believe in many things, okay? But one of the things that I have come to observe over the course of my life watching history unfold, studying history, and then anecdotally being around people, is that power attracts the corruptible or the already corrupted, but more to the point, power reveals. 
power reveals what a person really is. If you want to know what someone's really like, you give them the clearance and the capability to do anything they want. And then you'll get to see what kind of person they are. You know, Nixon proved that. The dude was disbarred for for um, immoral conduct. <laughs> and the judge was like, I don't know if you have the moral, the moral and ethical fortitude <laughs> to be an officer of the law. And then when he became president, we all know what happened. And if we don't, look it up. Google's free. All right. Um, unless you're in China. But, you know. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Give people the power to do whatever they want to do, and you will see what kind of person they are. And my big thing, um, I've been on, like, spiritual searches and trying to figure out what kind of man I want it to be for a long time. Okay, a long time. And one of the things that I come across a lot is people that have a fear of non-perfection, you know, and make no mistake, I want to be perfect at a couple of things, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to be a decent father, I want to be a decent partner. You know, I, I, I want to be a little less decent <laughs> of a friend than of those two, but I want to be a good friend and I do everything I can to be those things. I don't always know what I'm doing and I don't always do what I know. I'm getting better, you know, and I'm doing my best to get better every day. But um, the thing is, it's okay to be afraid of failing, but if you're so afraid that you're not moving, <laughs> if you're so afraid that you're not taking any risks, and if you're so afraid that when you make a mistake, you're going to look bad and you dodge responsibility and make a whole bunch of excuses and all that stuff, I'm not going to say you're on the right or wrong path. Only, only time can tell what path was right for you. But what I will say is this. I've seen lots of people that live on a path that lacks integrity. And I'm working on becoming a person that lives with more integrity. Okay, And the one thing I know from my personal experience and my anecdotal observation is that the people that live with integrity are way less stressed and a lot more happy about who they are. You know, I mean, outside of the imposter syndrome and the stress that comes from being under attack constantly about your integrity when people around you that have more power than you don't believe it. But it's a real interesting thing, you know. Um, I still get mad when people say that I've done terrible things that I didn't do. Um, and when they call me a liar when I'm telling the truth. But I'm not mad at the accusation. I'm mad at the actions that are taken based on people's belief in that. Because I am, you know, I, I've, I've got post-traumatic slave disorder. And that means um, growing up as a black person in America, my conduct isn't nearly as important as the interpretations of my conduct and the actions that other people take based on my conduct. Oh, we talked about that last week when it came to American gods, you know. Um, Orlando Jones was fired from his job because a Connecticut-born, Harvard-educated white dude thought that the message of anger gets stuff done given from an African god to slaves on a slave ship was a bad message for the black community. <laughs> is it? Is it not? That doesn't matter. All that matters is he believes it is. And then the black dude got fired. Okay, that's what that means. But if that's if that's not the world that you live in, you know, um, people believing something bad of you, that's if it's not true, it's not true. You know, I'm six feet four inches tall. <laughs> All right. Six feet six feet four inches, got long black and blue hair. I am not a normal looking person. Now I can say that I'm short. Somebody can call me short, but objectively um i'm not short <laughs> objectively i'm six foot four and six foot four is not short even if i'm surrounded by basketball players i'm still not short i'm just not as tall 
as the basketball players, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, the, those are, those are things. So when I live with integrity, when I do my best to be the type of person that I would want my daughter to bring home and say, and say, Hey, so this is the dude I'm going to marry, you know? Um, if I'm the type of person that would show her, like if, if I'm her example of who to bring home and she brings home someone I like, then I'm on a good track. In the meantime, I try and tell people um, to treat people the way that you want them to treat your children or treat them the way <laughs> um, that you wanted to be treated and not the way that you were, you know, and that, that, that's, a, that's a real big thing. Um, so, yeah, but a lot of the times the stuff gets to me and I almost gave up. I almost gave up on back in the deck because um we're not growing very fast i don't know why i don't know i i really don't i live in southern california and there are a lot of damaged people here so i get a lot of people saying i don't watch your show to me talk uh you're just a talking head there's all this other stuff and i'm like okay fine you know and it's tough it, it, it's really tough when the majority of the people that you know don't support your work however i keep going because there are people out there that need to hear what I have to say. And if I stop saying it, the chances of them hearing it are much lower. You know? So I'm going to be here. Matter of fact, we're expanding. <laughs> we're going back to our four-day-a-week schedule. Um, you know, so if you guys like this face or like my nasally voice, get used to it because it's happening a lot. All right? I've almost got the merch store up and going. I'm very happy um, with how the miniatures came out. And um, I'm happy, you know, if this keeps up, I'm going to be happy about how the rest of the miniatures are going to keep out. And um, over the court, the major thing that has made me almost quit was the fact that I had to make this entire company entirely soul um, sufficient. Okay, that's the whole thing. I had to do a whole lot to make sure that if anyone pulls their support for any reason, justified, unjustified, who cares? But I can no longer count on anyone that I can't afford to pay. It's just a downside. So how can I handle that? I have got to keep going. I got to keep going and I've just got to carry this on my back until we've got other people that are willing to help me with the load that's the whole thing but that means rewriting structure for everything <laughs> um i've retooled the studio um the studio isn't as welcoming to multiple people um but it works a lot better for me personally to do multiple shows myself um the battle reports are going to be interesting um so i'm going to do everything i can to go live four times a week a minimum three you've got my word on three um and i'm trying to um i'm trying to get a consistent schedule but my mind has been split so i talked to my mentor and he reminded me to keep doing what i love because i am like a virus not in the sense of you know i'm oddly shaped and i reproduce a lot but that i am very contagious my enthusiasm is very contagious and there are people that could use, you know, just a little bit of contamination from my hunt for joy and my wholesome and my wholesome mindset. And I'm like, don't call me wholesome. I got an image to uphold. And he's like, ah, shut up. And I'm like, all right, fine. So that's what we're going to do. Um, a lot of people ask me about video games and I'm sticking to the fact that I'm not doing video games. Primarily, I'm too far behind and the Internet is already ugly enough without a new guy who's middle-aged and black learning how to play video games online uh yeah i choose my battles <laughs> thank you <laughs> i choose my battles hard <laughs> you know uh last night one of my one of my mentors um was playing cuphead online and half of his fans were just mean and i'm like yeah nah not nah, not really my bag but um look out for the show coming uh the show that's going to be premiering in january warp tumblers 
which is the Esper Genesis game that I'm GMing with a cast of people that you guys have never met here before, so we've got new faces. Um, I'm hoping to restart the Inamine campaign, but that all depends on the work schedule of my players, which has jumped through the roof um, along with mine. And of course, um, we'll still be doing battle reports, TV reviews. I'm still doing Buster Recap. Um, it's just going to be a solo show now. And um, we've got some stuff to go by. I'm letting you guys know right now. Buster Recap. We're doing um, episode by episode breakdowns of The Watchmen and The Dragon Prince first. All right. So if y'all want to know what we over here at Back in the Deck think about The Watchmen and The Dragon Prince, that's what we're going to be doing episode by episode um, in the beginning of the year. All right. That's what we're going to do. Um, I would post a schedule, but I want to keep you guys coming down to um, the social media stuff because um, I do need them clicks and I'm trying not to fall under the very easy trap of clickbait. I do have a lot of hot take opinions, but I try not I, I try to only speak from my perspective instead of um, instead of saying absolute things like this is the greatest show of all time or this sucks i like to say i think this sucks or this isn't my taste you know type of thing because again people on the internet mean and sensitive and i'm trying to heal that i'm trying to be one of those forces out there on the internet to say hey you know what what you like isn't the totality of who you are okay I mean, it is Christmas Eve. I've yet to see Star Wars. I even had a chance, but I decided not to because um, I'm letting a few of the stuff come down. And guess what? Star Wars was my childhood, and I'm fine passing on that stuff to another generation because I've got the VHSs of the Star Wars stuff previous um, pre-special edition. So I've got my Star Wars. And I got a TV four times as big as the one I grew up with, so I can watch Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back whenever I want. I'm cool. It's yo guys' turn. You know, you guys take take the lightsabers, take all that stuff. I love the, the new lightsaber toys. I love how most people love being Jedis. But truth, as you guys on the on as you old timers that are here, the older deckers, as y'all know, you know, Doctor Who was really my thing. I'm like, okay wizards with laser swords okay those guys are cool a spaceship with plenty of adventures with some of your best friends playing space pirate but being good guys star trek cool you know wait a second hyper intelligent space hobo with a time machine check all in that was me all right so you know now i do more tabletop gaming than i do anything else when i'm not working so it's a thing um but yeah so that was um that was one of those things so those are the announcements that i have keep an eye out um for our changes starting around january 3rd or the week of january 3rd let me put this up here real quick to give you guys a more concise date yeah uh january 3rd is gonna be a friday it is a friday as a matter of fact it's a week it, it's 10 days from now okay and the weekend of the third so starting january 5th january 5th will be our new um our new time our new format and that is what we are working on so i have a lot of work to do and not a whole lot of time to get it done so <laughs> that's the whole thing we're gonna do but with that i want to thank you guys over in the chat um you guys have been aces i'm telling you that right now um seriously um and again like i said check out yeah check out our new um Ooh, sorry about that yeah um just making sure that the music was on and playing yeah so um just check out a lot of the stuff that we've been up to um like i said thank you guys over here in the chat you guys have been amazing and thank you guys for showing up again and thanks for your support bring some friends and all that stuff um and again since this is about the time that i am being played out um i appreciate that and i appreciate you guys like i said for showing up and being there for us and all that jazz hang on just trying real quick 
to get a few things up but if you guys want to join us um that is much 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 appreciated but guess what that's been our hour <laughs> we are done we are out of here we are getting ready um to get our coffee and um go back to our standard stuff but i appreciate that you guys are here I appreciate that you guys show up. I just appreciate you guys. It's good to see some of the older faces back in here. Um, special shout out to Clever Vixen and Shannon Boom Boom. We've got um, our queen and our ace um, on our on our Patreon thing. But um, let me know what other is going on um, by pulling up your keyboard and typing in back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E -K at gmail.com uh send us an email seriously i will um i'll read them on air i'll answer your questions i'll do all that jazz you know interact we hear we hear and you know what the the company email is on my cell phone so i get it whenever every time there's a back in the deck email it just pops up and i'm like oh god yeah i gotta answer this question cool let me make a note of this and answer it on the next show ha 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 um also head on over to the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, ring the bell, help get the word out, share the videos, all that jazz. Um, now, Twitch only keeps up the videos for like a couple of weeks, you know, type of thing. So some of them are gonna go on YouTube, but all of them are gonna head over to our Patreon um, at patreon.com slash back in the deck. And yeah, we're going to be talking about that stuff and, you know, join the tiers, get in on, on all that, see what we do with our day jobs and that jazz. And um, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Hit up, hit us up on SoundCloud, download the audio from our last episodes. I'm getting those up as soon as I can. It's just a matter of um, back in the deck only has one SoundCloud account and you can't upload more than one MP3 to um the soundcloud feed from multiple computers it's it's weird i was trying to load them from the phone the tablet the laptop the other laptop the desktop and, and yet another laptop but it's like no nah, one at a time bro one at a time so i'm going at the speed of servers and um hit us up on the social media on our instagram um on our instagram you can see really cool stuff such as you know the pictures that we have of this jazz you'll get all of the you'll get all of the announcements for every show you get to check out the backstage stuff that we do for the shows that we're doing production under you know there's a lot of stuff there and of course um you guys get to talk to each other and of course join deckers on the book so you guys can talk to each other or you know check out other pictures see the stuff that you guys like doing and all that stuff but until then if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disability or your budget you just tell them that we said to take them cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic sorcerer and i want to say have a happy whatever you celebrate if anything just have a good rest of the week y'all we will see you guys on new year's eve later